So we're going to continue the session in which we'll have presentations by the spoke leaders. And our next speaker is Rebecca Wright. She's a professor in computer science at Rutgers and director of DIMAX. And she is the PI on the spoke for privacy and security. Great. Thanks, Andrea. So um, in contrast to the talks you just heard in the last session, which were um, full uh, spokes projects, these are now going to be about um, the planning grant projects. So they're much smaller in, in terms of uh, dollar amount, uh, but many of them also are still looking to do that same sort of bringing people together, looking at the big problems, and, uh, and figure out what to do next from there. And, and that's true of ours as well. So we're looking at the security and privacy issues around big data, and this is led uh, by uh, Adam Smith at Penn State and myself at Rutgers. And uh, so we, we already you know, got hints of the importance of security and privacy uh, in really every talk that we've heard so far today uh, because it is one of these, these cross-cutting elements. Uh, and in particular, uh, uh, properly addressing privacy and security is really critical to realizing the full promise of big data to improve society, to advance science, to do all the things you want to do with that big data because if you, on the one hand, use the data uh, without regard to privacy or security um, of that data, then you may hurt people and you haven't realized your full promise to benefit society if you have to subtract out all the negative um, impacts as well. And on the other hand, if you're working uh, you know, without actually um, solving the security and privacy issues, then either you're going to deal with potentially bad data because someone came in and changed the data, uh, or uh, because you couldn't use the data at all because someone said you can't use this data because you're not properly securing and protecting the people whose, whose data is in there, then you can't realize the value of the data. So uh, for those reasons, security and privacy are, are really, um, as I said, these cross-cutting issues, and in particular, they play a critical role across um, all the topics we've heard, uh, things like health, things like energy, uh, smart cities and communities, uh, education data as well. You know, it's, 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 it, it's no stretch at all to imagine the kinds of sensitive and personal information that could be in that data that might um, raise concern and prevent use. And security and privacy are also grand challenges in themselves. There's a lot of difficult questions that we um, don't yet know how to solve, both in terms of the, the foundational uh, aspects of how you provide security and privacy, and perhaps even more so in taking things that are that are sort of you know research solutions that are out there where we understand what we need to do, but getting them in as best practices or adopted practices at all into real technologies is also a challenge. So this project seeks to bring people together to identify important new directions, things that can be done that haven't already been be done, been done, whether it's at the research forefront or the adoption forefront, um, to build community across these different areas and to catalyze future collaboration. So our main activities, uh, again, this is at this point just a planning grant, so we, so, uh, we, we are not um, uh, as involved yet in, in actually doing uh, you know, the, the, the big work to make this happen, uh, but we're really looking at that beginnings of bringing together the people, forming the community, figuring out the, the agenda to move forward, and so we're gonna have two workshops. Uh, the first of which is going to be held in April uh, 24th and 25th, and we have a website that's up there, so mark your calendars if you want to come. Um, we're still putting together the program. Uh, we'll probably primarily be um, doing the program by invitation, but the workshop itself will be open to, to anyone who wants to register. So if you want to show up, please register and show up. If you think you might uh, want to present or have ideas about who, who should or interesting ways to bring different ideas together for some kind of um, breakout group or session, you know, please feel free to talk to me or to Adam. Uh, and uh, then the second workshop is uh, on overcoming privacy-related barriers to sharing data. So we just heard about the importance of sharing data earlier, and this is going to specifically address some of the privacy issues and uh, how to solve those, and that'll be uh, sometime in the fall. So both of them again, in the, in the spirit of bringing together people, are going to be bridging academia, industry, and government participation, looking to formulate what the challenges are, you know, to some sense understand what the state of the art is and where it falls short of addressing the needs uh, that different people and projects have, and then to identify potential projects to move forward with, both at the national and the regional levels. They'll both be held at DIMAX on the Rutgers campus in New Jersey. 
So as I said, this first workshop, which is going to be in April, is going to be a very broad workshop on security of data infrastructure and privacy and control uh, concerns uh, for collection, processing, and sharing of data control in the sense of how much control do you allow to individuals or, or data holders that have, uh, have some data when they're engaging in sharing that data. And the thematic structure is going to uh, be to look at really sort of area-specific concerns related to the spokes of, of the BD Hub. So we'll be looking both at the, the initial set that there were, but also uh, clearly wanting to focus on these active projects uh, that, that are, are there now, so around health, around data sharing, around education. The planning, as I said, is ongoing. Uh, and not only can you talk to me if you're interested, but you can talk to sort of, we have the, the sort of organizational organizers, uh, me, Adam, and Renee, uh, here, and then we have uh, different representatives of university, industry, and government, or government advocacy, uh, public sector, anyway. Um, thank you. Uh, as well, so feel free to talk to any of us uh, at any time, uh, and there's an email address on the website, so if you don't catch me today, you can reach us that way as well. And then our second workshop uh, on this overcoming privacy-related barriers to sharing data, as I said, is really going to focus on these privacy concerns around sharing sensitive personal data. Um, the five themes will be privacy-preserving data analysis and de-anonymization. Um, why de-anonymization? Because uh, this idea, right, one of the things that I think we see is critically important is it's very easy to imagine that you can de-identify data, meaning you can take data and anonymize it. And over and over again, it's been shown that, uh, that such data really is not as anonymous or de-identified as it appears because it's quite uh, straightforward in many cases to take the same kinds of machine learning techniques that people want to apply the data to extract information to apply to the data and extract information in the form of those people's identities. And so just making sure that, uh, that any methods that use that are are done in such a way that they, they are uh, robust. Um, and then at the same time, understanding how you can do the data analysis in a way that doesn't fall prey to that. Uh, looking at government systems and policies, cryptographic tools and methods for sharing and processing data. And then um, these other sort of data sharing issues that aren't necessarily uh, always privacy related, but definitely uh, intersect with that around transparency, around algorithmic fairness, and other kinds of ethical challenges when you share data and get outcomes that maybe are not um, the ones that we, that we think are, are sort of the right outcomes for society, as well as legal perspectives, understanding that um, not just technical mechanisms, but legal mechanisms can actually provide protection and how do those interact. So that workshop will be sometime in the fall, not yet scheduled dates. And again, we've got the same uh, administrative uh, and organizational organizers, and uh, then again, uh, a government, industry, and academic uh, organizer as well. And that was my last slide. <laughs> so thanks, I'd be happy to take any questions. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, one of the ways that we'll certainly get some engagement is um, by having uh, talks or sessions or even just participants from those relevant projects at our workshops uh, so that they can not just talk to me, but talk to sort of the other people that are there. Um, so if that, if that works out for your schedule, we should, we should definitely talk and get there. But, but uh, you know, also I think we're viewing the, the hub as a mechanism for helping us find those people. Because it's so easy to do your research and your thinking in your own silo, solve your very particular problems. And you know, if I'm looking for some application of privacy and security, I can make them up. But I don't necessarily have, have the mechanisms to really engage. And, and so, you know, the hope is, is, especially through participation in the workshops, you can maybe find the people who are ready to work together and move forward. Yeah. yeah so um, we saw a little bit of uh, similarity between some of the things you're doing in the data sharing group, and I was just wondering if you guys are addressing that to make sure that this Yeah, is yeah. So Adam, more than I have, has been in, in conversation uh, with that group to, to, to sort of, yeah, make sure that we're going, um, <laughs> you know, covering a broad space, but with, with knowledge and, and uh, um, collaboration across them, for sure. I, I probably don't need the mic, but um, 
are is the data sharing group looking at techniques around differential privacy to deal with some of these uh, uh, de-anonymization and and de-identification risks? Absolutely. So uh, Adam Smith is the S in the DMRS or whatever paper that introduced differential privacy, and uh, that's one of the key reasons that that I think uh, he's really interested in putting his time into to participating and, and maybe seeing some of those ideas or extensions of those ideas, uh, you know, be, be really used in practice. Um, but we're not limited to, to that approach, but, but it, it seems a very, a very promising approach for, um, for its ability to trade off usability and, and privacy. Or not just trade off, but find a good space in the trade off uh, of those things. Yeah. 